So when there's a failure, and we'll say like a big failure, uh, you you have to be able to not just learn from it. You have to be able to forgive yourself, forgive everybody that was involved about what exactly happened to be able to move on and have an understanding that it happened for a reason. Uh, I, I think if you're not failing, you're not pushing hard enough. I'm Julie B. And they don't teach this in business school. Hey there, I'm Julie B. And you're watching They Don't Teach This in Business School, a show where we discuss business ownership lessons that are learned through experience, not in a classroom. Today, I'm really excited to interview Ron Nussbaum, the co-founder and CEO of Nutnest. I'm looking forward to this conversation because I know we are going to learn some really valuable lessons about business ownership. So Ron, welcome to the show. and Thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited about our conversation today. Yeah, I think it's going to be a good one. So why don't we just start off with you telling us about Nutnest and your role in your business today? Yeah, so Nutness is a customer communication platform built for the residential construction industry. Uh, I spent, after getting out of the Marine Corps, I spent just about 10, just over a decade in residential construction. And I've done everything from digging the hose to running the companies. Uh, I've sat on a bunch of different seats on the bus, and that's what led me to creating Nutness. Mm -hmm. I dealt with some escalated customers. Customer communication and communications, the number one complaint within the construction industry. And I kind of just one day was like, this isn't how it's going to be. I can't continue to scale a company when we're having communication breakdown. So I went about building a solution for it. And instead of just keeping that all in one place and being like, oh, this is mine. Uh, I decided to roll it out nationwide and give a solution to the entire industry for communication instead of just saying, hey, we can fix ours and this would be us. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's what we do. I'm super excited for what we're doing right now because you can trace back the first public, one of the very first published articles on communication problems in construction to 1991. There was a magazine that wrote that it was one of the top three problems with residential construction. Here we are in 2023, and if you Googled it, you could find an article probably written within the last 30 days saying the exact same thing. Yeah. So I'm glad to be at the forefront and in the trenches of actually cleaning up that mindset around the construction industry. And in construction, there are literally a lot, a ton of, uh, literally a ton of moving pieces and parts. It, and it, it is, I actually worked in residential construction for a few years before starting my company. And I mean, it was just crazy how easily uh, it was, how easy it was to miscommunicate or miss things because of all of the people that you're, you're managing on a job site, as well as the parts and the labor and all of that. It's just, it's something that's very needed for sure. Yeah, it, it's it's amazing that not just the amount of moving pieces, but I say it's one industry where you can go from zero to five alarm fire within about 20 minutes. And yeah. typically that's because of a communication breakdown. Somebody dropped the ball or the customer didn't get the response they were looking for or they just didn't ask the question and then mm -hmm. the project gets finished. We run into that all too often mm -hmm. where they don't feel empowered to be able to ask a question because they don't know who they're talking to or who to ask. And then the project wraps up and they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. This isn't what I had in my mind. Mm -hmm. So being proactive with a lot of that really helps. So Ron, what is your favorite part about being a business owner? It's, it's not like, I think a lot of people say the control over what you do in your time. Uh, I think a lot of that's fantastic, mm -hmm. but I think the ability to be the one that paints the vision and casts the vision. Uh, that's where I really excel. I understand where we're headed with Nut Nest. What is the impact that I want to have? And I've become a master of painting that picture and also creating a road to get there. So people understand this is how we're going to do what would seem to be the impossible. My mission is to help 5 million people in residential construction with communication. And it's not just all through Nutnest. Mm -hmm. It's 
through doing podcasts like this, doing speaking engagements, writing articles, and just being out there talking about how we can be better communicators, and then bringing people along for that ride. Uh, I think as business owners, we have to understand how everything works, but we don't have to be a master at everything. So I really, I really enjoy learning how to do stuff enough to where, you know, like enough where I'd be dangerous, Mm -hmm. Uh, but I don't necessarily want to do it. But then I understand it. I can say, hey, here's the outcome I'm looking to achieve. This is the vision. And then finding the best person possible to do that and let them do it because they understand what the outcome is I'm trying to create and running with that. So that's what I love. That's what I enjoy. And that's, that's right off the pages of traction. Um, you know, you're definitely in that visionary role and I'm, I'm guessing you have at least one integrator that, that helps you achieve, uh, that's helping you achieve that vision that you have. Um, but talk a little bit about how, cause I, for me, one thing I can, I often struggle with is painting the clear picture. I think I can, I can see it, but sometimes putting that into words where how for other people to understand is really challenging for me how do you navigate that how do you make sure that you know the picture you're seeing can be painted so that other people can see it as well i think that's where reps and practice comes in uh that's why i say having an understanding i'll use social media as uh, an example like Mm -hmm. i did a lot of my social media i still do some of my social media uh i don't do it all anymore but I was doing it all at one point in time. And I had people on a daily basis tell me, Ron, why are you doing this? There's virtual assistants that can do this. You can have whoever do it. Like this isn't something people do. And I'm like, well, I want to understand it. Like mm-hmm. I want to understand it enough that I can clearly say what I want to have happen. Because if I have a vision and I have no understanding of what it takes to actually do this, do the the work around it, my vision might be way off. So I, I can paint that vision, but it might not relate. But by, you know, spending a few weeks, I spent about 60 days doing mm-hmm. my social media. So I had, I, I felt like I had a good grasp on some systems and stuff and how to do it. So I could set somebody up for success I could really paint a clear vision because I had done it for a little bit. And I I come from, I'm a non-technical tech founder. Like I was in the Marine Corps and then in the construction industry. And now I have a software company. So I think I look at stuff a lot differently than a lot of people. And I'm not, I'm not afraid to just get in there and do something that a lot of people would just consider, Hey, you can sub that out real quick because you never get that clarity. If you're just like, hey, just go do this. I want to have a million followers. Well, I don't necessarily want to have a million followers. I would rather have 5,000 of the right followers than a million followers. But I understand that now because I've done some of it. Yeah. I've went through it. So I, I think that's how you start to understand how to paint a clear vision for somebody is you do a little bit of it. And then you actually understand what they're going to be doing. And then understanding personalities, like how you cast that vision is different for different people. So you have to know that person. You have to ask the right questions. You have to understand where they've been, where they're at, and where they want to go. So once you understand that, how your outcome you want to have happen, you can put that message to your other and cast that vision with clarity for them. Absolutely. Um, and, and, you know, that that's a really good piece of advice to do, do the work that it's going to take to get there, even if you only do it for, you know, a few weeks so that you can understand what it takes somebody else to do to get to the vision that you, you can, you see. Uh, that's a really great piece of advice. Ron, one thing I love to ask business owners is about um, their, their biggest wins and their time as entrepreneurs. And do you, do you have any wins that really stand out in your mind um, that you could share with us? So I think wins are, they're, they're a huge part. And I think stepping up to the plate every day and trying to create wins 
is what everybody should be doing. Uh, and whether they're big or little, uh, I'm really proud of a lot of the big strategic partnerships that we're getting ready to roll out uh, with Nutnest and national brands and national teams uh, that typically for startups, they can't get done. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I credit that to just relationships building relationships, being willing to have these conversa conversations and creating a win-win-win outcome for everybody involved. And uh, I think that's my biggest wins right now is the fact that I've been able to create these partnerships and create an environment where we're having an impact on the construction industry to other and we're moving the ball. Uh, in the past, I looked at wins as really monetary and i've kind of, i've shifted that thinking i mean i took mm -hmm. took a residential construction company from a few million a year to over 25 million in annual revenue and like that's a huge accomplishment but like i was miserable like yeah. i worked in more i was i was an operator like i was in that i worked a lot in that integrator role which is not like i don't mind that but like i'm not not naturally like that's not ron yeah. Ron's better doing what he is right now. He's a lot more happier doing what he is. Yeah. So that's a win for me is understanding that, but still having the ability to go and do that operator role. So I understand exactly what that looks like, but I can cast that vision. Hey, this is Julie V and you're watching They Don't Teach This in Business School. I'm here with Ron Newsbaum of Nutnest and we are just talking about some of the wins that he's had. So Ron, I'm going to ask you the flip side of that question. Do you have any past mistakes or failures that, you know, looking back, um, if you could go back and change them, would you? And if so, what would you change? So... I, I, I put a lot of thought into some of this because I've had some situations go really sideways and some stuff that really ended up just blowing up. Didn't it work out how I thought it would? Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't change any of it because I, I think that's the stuff that leads you to where you're going. We have to be willing to learn mm -hmm. as we go. I, and I, I'll throw one more thing in there. I don't think we, we talk about enough uh, is we need to be able to learn and forgive. So whether that's yourself or somebody else, like you, you have to be able to work through it. I think a lot of times we, we just keep pushing through, uh, when, so when there's a failure and we'll say like a big failure, uh, you, you have to be able to not just learn from it. You have to be able to forgive yourself, forgive everybody that was involved about what exactly happened to be able to move on and have an understanding that it happened for a reason. Uh, I, I think if you're not failing, you're not pushing hard enough. Uh, I fail, I fail, I would say regularly just with yeah. stuff like outcomes that I think should be produced, don't end up happening, or I can't make something happen that I think should be happening. Uh, I'll tell you the, the, uh, the, one of the most recent, when we went live, uh, we had, two options when you came on our site and that was a uh, beginning plan or the unlimited plan. I didn't have any way to capture any information. So we drove all this traffic during our launch and you had a couple options. That was like sign up or leave. There was nothing in between. So like that was something like we failed. Mm -hmm. So we had to pivot. I just think you have to be able to quickly adjust. So now we offer a completely free project and a free account. So when people come to our website, it's not like, oh, I need to subscribe. I need to put in my credit card. You don't even have to put your credit card information in anymore. So we were able to learn from that. We failed. We learned. I forgave myself because hindsight's 2020. Yeah. I was like, man, I should have understood this. Like the first week, like when I had this realization, like I was like, what was I thinking? But then I had to just say, hey, it's okay, man. We learned from it. Let's not ever do that again. And we rolled out the best offer in the industry. When you look at construction software, like the free account, free project, no credit card, no timelines. Mm -hmm. Like we literally now have the best offer in the industry. And that wouldn't have happened without us taking off and looking like, oh, well, 
there's really no way for all passengers to get on the plane. So yeah. uh, that that is a recent, what I would consider a failure, but a great learning experience. So how talk a little bit about forgiving yourself, because I think a lot of business owners carry guilt with them for for a long, I mean, I do myself, I know I do this when we make a mistake. Um, how did, how, what is your process for forgiving yourself for those types of, those types of things? So, uh, I think it's something that you have to work through. Uh, a lot of us carry a lot of crap around and that's, uh, something that a great man, uh, David Goodall, told me he's helped me work through some of my stuff. I, I, I believe in having the right people around you, uh, continuing to grow. If you have stuff you need to work through, like I, I so I think we get a lot of coaches for just business. Mm -hmm. Like this is a business coach, somebody that can help us in there. You also have to have people that can help work through your mind. And mm -hmm. what does that look like? You got to be able to work through the garbage of the past. Uh, coming from the Marine Corps, I was a grunt. Uh, I think you learn to just systematically work through stuff, mm -hmm. get to that end result. And I think that has paid dividends for me. Uh, once you unpack this stuff and then you become comfortable and just understand, like, it's part of life. Yeah. Like people that aren't successful are the people that can't figure that out. Because if something happens and you get hung up on it, it's like quitting mm -hmm. because you can never make it past that point. So if you're like, say you're at 10 million and you just can't get over 10 million year after year, there's probably something that you're hanging on to that you just have to say, hey, it's okay. Yeah. And move on from in order to go. I, I think. Every day, I'm continuously trying to become the leader that can lead Nutness at a hundred million dollar evaluation. Like that's, I have to understand how to become that person, mm -hmm. and that's going to have to do with a lot of forgiveness along the way yeah. because none of us are perfect. Yeah, I, I guess that I had one. Um, her interview hasn't gone live yet, but she said something to the effect of, "You have to let go to grow." And that's a really good, I mean, we were talking about a totally different, different thing, but I think that that applies here too. Like you have to let go of, of the guilt that you have when you make a mistake to be able to grow beyond it. Cause otherwise you're just going to play the what if game and, and that doesn't really help anybody. <laughs> well, you know, one of the things that I, I tell myself and I tell people all the time is cause I'm a big action guy. Mm -hmm. Like I think you should be taking action. That's mm -hmm. what will lead to success. And I, I firmly believe if you're taking action without malice in your heart, like no bad could come from that. Like you might blow a few things up here and there, but you're doing it without ear intent. So you can't be too upset about it. Like yeah. as you row, you're going to break stuff. That's why systems are created. If you're not breaking it and you're not pushing it, then you're just kind of being at the status quo level. Like mm -hmm. you're just letting it be. And I, I, I just believe you just keep pushing, you break it, you fix it, and it's better than it was before. But you have to understand that it's not your fault because you're going, you're headed to an end goal. You have an outcome that you're looking to achieve. Absolutely. So kind of on the, you know, I think in the same line as that, uh, one one thing I'm talking to business owners a lot about is burnout. Um, and I was, I'm curious if you have any stories about uh, burnout in business that you, you would be willing to share with us. Uh, so... I don't necessarily think about it like it's burnout mm -hmm. as in just being miserable because you're in like you're in just the wrong environment. And uh, that's how I look at it. I don't I don't necessarily think if you're doing what you love, it's really hard to get burnout. Yeah. On it. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody has tolerances for stuff. I think that has a lot to do with when we talk about figuring things out and then finding the right person. Like if if you're truly headed where you want to go and you're building a team around you, the stuff that you don't like and the stuff that makes you miserable that will cause that burnout, mm -hmm. you should be putting together a plan mm -hmm. to move somebody into that role. 
or to delegate that or figure out what does that look like so you can continue like we should consistently be moving up the chart of what we really want to do like when you have a business the end goal is to be in your most powerful spot what is that where do you make the most magic and where are you happy i think that's the biggest component or the biggest way to block burnout is to understand that and understand that hey sometimes it's going to suck but this is how we get to where we're the happiest not only professionally but in our personal life you're watching they don't teach this in business school i'm julie b and i'm here with ron newsbaum today and we're talking a little bit about burnout here and um you know one thing ron you said in that uh conversation was making sure you're kind of always growing up the organization that you were going up in the organization. And I'm curious as to how you, how do you make sure that you are working on those daily high impact activities that can really push your business forward? I just, I make that a priority. Like I, that's the stuff I like. So I think that that's easy. For me, yeah. like, I, I have to, I would like, I have to focus harder on doing the stuff I don't like currently yeah. because that's just, that's where we're at. That's the life cycle of the business right now. And th that's our season that we're in. But, you know, I read every day. I listen to podcasts. I continue, like, I'm always looking to grow and put the right stuff in that's going to continue to take me to the right place. Like, I'm not a consumer when it comes to social media. Like I put yeah. out content, I don't consume it. I'm always looking for the right stuff that's going to be able to help take me to the next level. So if that's putting, you know, 45 minutes a night to be able to sit down and read, or what does that look like? Like that, that to me is how you start to focus in on that stuff. Yeah. So how do you, uh, the other question I want to ask about this is are, are there, are there some things that you have found that maybe you don't like to do, but for some reason they just keep coming back to your coming back on your plate? Is there anything in particular that you've had a, a challenging time delegating or hiring for or outsourcing? Not, not that I've had a challenging time. It's just, it's something like every life cycle and how it functions. I, I tend to find myself in like a sale, the kind of a sales position. And that's not really like my bread and butter. I'm not a, I'm not like a sales person, mm -hmm. but I, you have to sit on that seat. I've done it in house. I've done it virtually. I've done it in person. Like I've done it in all these different ways. It's something that comes into my life. And then I figure out how I cycle that out uh, because it's not necessarily like, it's not that I'm bad at it. It's just not something that I want to be sitting around doing, I guess, would be the best way to put that. It's but not it keeps your favorite thing. <laughs> yeah, but it keeps popping up. So, I mean, people must like to buy from me is the only <laughs> thing I can think of. Well, that's a good, that's a good, like if you were, if you had to do something that you don't love doing, doing sales in a way and having people love to buy from you is, is pretty, is a pretty sweet gig. So, <laughs> say so. Um, so Ron, another question I have for you is how, how do you uh, define success? I, I would say one of the best ways for me to put that right now would just be happiness. Like, what does that look like? from a business perspective, from a personal perspective, we all have targets, we all have goals, but if we destroy everything on the way to that, was it really worth it? Uh, my partner, Jared Yellen in Nut Nest is he's a big component of this. Like that's his thing is like, he's like, if you, if we just destroy everything, building something, what did we really gain? Like, you know, say, you know, that's just throw what you build a billion dollar company, but you get divorced. You don't know your kids. Mm -hmm. You have like it, you work 100 hours a week. Like, was that worth it at the end of the day? I mean, to me, no. Yeah, I would rather I would rather figure out how do we make all this coexist? Like, we just moved across the country 
from Michigan. I'm originally from Ohio, lived in Michigan for over 12 years because that's where my wife was from. We just moved down to North Carolina because we wanted to be by the ocean. Cool. Also, my four-year-old son likes yeah. to be outside. We were done with the winters. That was a decision made on quality of life. Like the year that it took to get down here, selling everything, moving across the country, all that stuff is completely miserable stuff. And that's the biggest hurdle. Like people won't do it because they'll be like, oh, well, that is, it'd be so hard. Yeah. But the quality of life is so much better. It was worth every minute of that pain to get there, to get here. So when you're doing the same thing with business, you have to look like, is there going to be some pain right now? Yeah, probably. But there's there's an end outcome that's going to outweigh the current pain. Mm-hmm. But we don't want that pain in between to break everything. Yeah. Like if moving down here would have broke my relationship with my wife or my son's only four, it's hard to break that relationship. But if it would have destroyed all of that, it wouldn't have been worth the end outcome. But we were aligned on where we wanted to go and why we were going there. We had the vision, the mission, we had an understanding and we had talked about that, you know, there's a go, it's going to be rough. Yeah. Like staying in a couple of different Airbnbs for 30 days at a time while you're waiting to close on a house is not easy, but we knew once it all ended, it was so short term that it was going to be an amazing outcome. Yeah. And you have to do the same thing in business as well. Yeah, sometimes it's worth, I, I think that's the that's the trick is knowing, sometimes it's harder to know when it's worth embracing the suck, as they say, you know, <laughs> embracing that pain that's in between. But that, that was a pretty clear, I actually live in North Carolina. And so, yeah, I would, and, and moved from further north. So that is definitely, uh, that was worth the suck for me as well. So, <laughs> so Ron, listen, as we're uh, coming to the end of the conversation today, I just have one more question for you. Um, if you. If you had taken a class in business school before starting a business, what is one thing that you really wish you would have learned? Uh, what, what is one thing you would have liked to have learned in that class? Yeah, I, I think uh, what we don't do a good enough job of teaching people is to understand who you are and be yourself. Uh, I think there's all of this. There's a lot of like, this is what you have to be to be a business leader uh, or you have to kind of change. Like I'm a, I'm a really direct type A personality mm-hmm. and that, that can be frowned upon. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, I've had coaching in my life that was like, you got to be less like this and do this and that. And that was complete BS. That was wrong. Yeah. I need to be Ron, but I have to understand other people and I have to be able to communicate with them. And that's how everybody, that, that's what I wish I would have learned at like 20 years old. I think I wish I would have had a better understanding on like who I am. What am I really good at? And leaning into that and just going with that and continuing to grow because I'll tell you, I've had my my best growth. And I, I say like just easy. Like once I understood that and I leaned fully into it, it's been easy to grow. Hmm. Uh and I don't mean easy, like it's just everything's all yeah. rainbows and cupcakes, but it just makes it so like it's not like you're fighting against something as you grow. And that's how for so many years I felt like I, I felt like I was fighting an uphill battle to get better and to become a better me. It's because I was trying to become a better, not really Ron. Mm-hmm. As soon as I understood like who Ron was, this is what we need to be the best mm-hmm. at. And I embrace that. That is when that growth didn't feel like an uphill batter. It just felt like the natural transition of life of what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. When you stopped fighting yourself, that that kind of sounds like you were just fighting a, a version of, or you, your a version of you was fighting who was the real you that was trying to come out. And so you have to just, I, you know, a lot of, a lot, I think almost everybody kind of goes through a journey similar to that. Um, but yeah, if I had known who I really if I had known what I know about myself today, you know, when I was 20, I would have saved myself a lot of, a lot of heartache, a lot of challenges, but that's also part of the journey. So I, that I appreciate that. That's a really good insight. 
So Ron, yeah, was it? I, go ahead. Uh -huh. Oh, I was going to say, and I think you, they could teach that in a couple classes at school. Yeah. Like all it is, is just a, who you are and understanding that and saying, Hey, it's okay. Like, it's okay to be the Ron that's a type A personality, understands what he wants, and this is how we're going to get it. But what's more important for Ron is to understand how other people react to that so he can communicate with them. Because not everybody communicates like Ron. And Ron shouldn't change who he is to communicate with other people. Ron should just understand how to communicate with other people and still be Ron. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that takes practice. Like you said earlier, that getting in the reps in a lot of the ways in business ownership, I think, is is the key because you're just, you know, I had I was interviewing a guy a couple of weeks ago where he said every every day he played football and he said every day is like a snap of, you know, you, you so you might have a bad snap or a bad day, but then the next day you get, get a chance to, you know, play, play again. And I think that that's a really important thing to know too, is you're going down the, down the road of business ownership, because you're going to have days that just are not good. And then you're going to have days that are just amazing. Um, and knowing how to communicate is, you know, one of those things that getting better at it every single day, I think is, uh, it's one of my goals certainly. And I think a lot of business owners, uh, work on that as well. So, well, Ron, listen, I have so enjoyed this conversation. I know the business owners who are going to watch this are going to really enjoy it as well. I just want to thank you again for being on the show today. Hey, thank you for having me. It's been an amazing conversation. I really enjoyed it. And that is it for this episode, but stay tuned because I'll be back soon with more lessons learned on the business owner's journey. I'm Julie B, and they don't teach this in business school.